Find your names beside your places. Please be seated. Oh, okay. That's right. Is this place for you? Oh, indeed, no, sir. I'm merely a humble butler. What exactly do you do? I battle, sir. Which means what? The butler is head of the kitchen and dining room. I keep everything tidy. That's all. Well, what's all this about, Butler, this dinner party? Ours not the reason why. Ours but to do and die. Die? Merely quoting, sir, from Alfred Lord Tennyson. Hmm. I prefer Kipling myself. The female of the species... And welcome back... To Clue the Movie podcast, where we look at the 1985 cult classic Clue the Movie one minute at a time. My name is Brad Gilmore, and I'm joined always by Sergeant Jeff Smith. Oh. Just gave you a, a military rank there. How Thank you doing? You. I'm going to be reporting for duty. I'm not not a colonel, but a sergeant. Yes. Or is that an angel's hat you're wearing? It is. Why? I'm from Orange County. I know, but like, why right now? I mean, oh, no, they're terrible. It's true. All right, Mr. Astros. Yeah, I'm looking for my Astros hat. (laughs) You don't have to. That's the thing. I have to sport hometown, and you don't have to. They're doing just fine. I saw your tweets. Yes. Oh, uh, uh, you were having a very good time on Twitter uh, during the Yankee game. The Yankees. You know, growing up, I was a Yankee fan because they were in the AL and we were in the NL. The Astros were originally in the National. So it didn't matter. I was a Yankee fan. Yeah. And then, you know, now they're my sworn enemy. Just that's the way it happens. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hello. This is going to be so out of date by the time this uh doesn't matter. It drops, doesn't matter yeah. because but, if, even if you listen to this the following October, guess right. what? We're probably yeah. still going to be in the World They'll Series. Be back. Yeah. yeah. And the Angels will not be, <laughs> for sure. Or that's what you call evergreen content, Jeff. Uh, we're talking about Minute 11 of yeah. Clue the Movie. This yeah. one... Uh, begins we with... We get to the dining room. Yeah, yeah, we finally get to finally. the dining room. It begins yeah. with uh, uh, Wadsworth leading everyone to the dining room, and then right. everyone's sitting yeah, down. You can see uh, some sinister looks as everybody looks around at each other, sizing each other up, and then the cook rings the gong, <laughs> and Mr. Green spills his first Yay. beverage. His first, yeah, Mrs. Peacock, who does not really react. Um and then off they go. That we take our time to establish the geography of the of the house. We go from one side of the hall to the other, and then something we talked about, which I didn't remember, but now obviously uh, they are placed in certain spots. He says you'll find your names, which we never actually see, um, but you'll find your names. So they were seated in specific locations, which I don't think really pays off at all, other than eventually Professor Plum and and Mrs. White will be slurping their soup side by side. But Professor Plum does not get to sit by uh, Miss Scarlet. He does not. He does not. So I I do want to break down in a minute the assigned seating and what it could potentially mean. Um, Okay. But you are right. So Mr. Green, we established before, if you go by the third ending as the true ending, of, yes. of the movie, which I believe it is. What we talked about last time, and like you were digging deep. I was just uh, yeah. You were like he is doing a huge performance. So in the in the wrestling business, we call it a work, right? So it's okay. like if something is kind of a put on, you call it a work. If it's for real, okay. you call it a shoot, right? Okay. So I think that he's working us. Like I think this is all a big to do right. because so when the cook hits the gong, ba ba ba, he throws his drink onto Mrs. Peacock. As you said, she doesn't really react, and yeah. then he says, oh, "Sorry, I'm a bit accident prone," right? Yeah. And then he pulls out his uh pocket square his handkerchief and tries to i guess clean off the brandy of her fur yeah her little fox hanging from her neck probably not gonna work consider it and he's putting effort into it you know good good job mr green but yeah he yeah he obviously we saw him when he got there he 
sat when the dog was told to sit, but you had the theory that that was his, you know, government background, perhaps that right. he was just following orders and he just instinctively was told by someone with a bow tie to sit. But I was speaking of the bow tie. So this is the first time now we get some funny dialogue as far as humor with the uh, and the rapid pace of the of the dialogue with you know who are you on the butler what do you do I buttle so we have moved beyond poop yes we've gone and into really boring. what what people remember this movie yeah. for the zippiness of the dialogue and the uh, um, deadpan delivery really of it it's not like right. a hey guys I'm telling a joke <laughs> right it's not like theater acting where they say blah 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 blah. Oh, blah blah blah, and you know, play to the audience. No, if you're really not funny, I guess you have no idea that they're being funny, right? Um, because they're just going in that his girl Friday, uh, mile a minute dialogue. If, and if you can't keep up, watch it again, which is part of the fun of Clue is it's the repeatability factor. It's as we'll get into it once, once they get to the study, then it's really mile a minute. So, uh, Buttle is a verb uh, described as a humorous one, according to Oxford Languages. And the definition is to work as a butler. So, accurate. And the sentence they use is, there is no one today worth buttling for. <laughs> so, there you go. Oh. There, there yeah. you go. He buttles. But he buttles. But he buttles. So, yeah, we definitely see, after the gong, uh, Wadsworth leads everyone to the dining room, you, uh, the sound editing for the first time in the movie really stuck out to me, um, which okay. is something that you don't, I guess, naturally just pay attention to if you're watching a film. But I could distinctly hear everybody's uh, footsteps, and I don't know, oh, I don't know why, totally. but you hear. I mean, you hear the amount of feet. The sound of Clue is interesting because as we go on, there are some scenes where it's very obvious that the dialogue has been recorded later it just sounds different and the first time i interviewed uh the clue director jonathan lynn i said you know so there's a lot of adr which is automatic dialogue replacement or recording uh and he said yeah and i said was that intentional and he went well we did it and so i, I just let that drop real quick so i'm like oh i maybe you turned over a stone he didn't want to tell him something that maybe it sounds off and it wasn't supposed to, but it seems there's, there's some scenes where it seems so intentional. Like it's part of the, the humor of it. Um, but that's interesting that the footsteps are making as they shuffle in. I mean, they're very, very overly heard footsteps. Uh, and, and, but, but, but you can speak to it as a filmmaker, something I can't do. I mean, sound is one of those things that you just take for granted uh, a lot of times it's like, oh, I just turn the camera on and uh, put the guy in front yeah. of the camera and, uh, you know, he talks and the audio is mm -hmm. going to get worked out by itself. But that's not really how it works at no, all. No, sound is uh, not appreciated unless it's bad. Mm. Everybody notices it. I mean, I I know that you can spot a low budget movie more because the sound is off than the visuals. People will forgive um, like dark lighting or even, you know, crummy camera work or grainy camera work but when you can't hear that's when people really start to know, or if the volume goes up and down and up and down then people tend to really notice that do include the movie uh doing the documentary for clue the movie did you have any audio issues oh absolutely yeah i didn't know what i was doing so um and definitely some of the uh subjects talk louder than others uh, the aforementioned Jonathan Lynn uh, is a mumbler. I love him, but he talks very quiet. And unfortunately, he was also the first person I interviewed. So I hadn't figured out my... And also, I was trying to be extremely polite, so I didn't use like little uh, lav mics that attach. I was trying to use a boom mic from the side. And I certainly didn't have the courage to say, could you speak up? So while it was happening, I remember thinking, this is going to be interesting so fortunately uh i found a sound mixer at the end that uh, we had a very long conversation because <laughs> if anyone complains about the sound in in who done the clue documentary you have every right to but you should have heard what it was before and when the guy that did it uh his name's javier 
when he heard it the first time, he went, "This is this is the audio." I went, "Yeah, that's it. Sorry, that's uh, <laughs> that's what it is." And he's like, "All right, it's not going to be perfect." And I said, "That's okay. I know. I know. I just want to be able to hear them." For any consolation, the audio did not stand out when I when Great. my screen. That's the the best compliment I could think of is that you didn't even pay attention to it. As long as you could hear what they were saying, that's all that matters. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, so, yes. Yes, very good. Uh, who done it? The Clue documentary, cluedoc.com. We got to get that plug in. Um, when they go to the dining room, we had the exchange of Colonel Mustard and Wadsworth. What do you do? I buttle. Yes. Um, and then they're, they're placed in their seats. Okay. And this is how they are next to one another. You have uh, Peacock and then uh, Miss Peacock, Professor Plum, and Mrs. White on one side of the table. Mm-hmm. On the other side of the table, you have uh, Colonel Mustard, Mrs. Scarlet, and then Mr. Green uh, mm-hmm. next to each other. They were assigned these seats. I'm trying to figure out why. You said there was no payoff to it. What What would the... What would it oh, be? Are going to speculate why they... Uh, why Why would Peacock, Plum, and White be next to each other? I'm just trying to think of what's the connection between the three of them. The only thing that really happens with their seating arrangement is Plum is definitely analyzes Mrs. Peacock's uh, uh, fear of silence mm-hmm. immediately when she, I mean, that's the next minute. And I'm very curious to see if that's going to get cut off. because <laughs> She does have a very long uh, rant coming up. And other than that, it's funny that Colonel Mustard and Miss Scarlet are sitting next to each other because they do have a history that she remembers that he doesn't. But Miss Scarlet is such a cool character that she never really lets on to anybody that she, I mean, she probably knows the whole town. So right. that would be her skill is to, you know, I don't know you outside of Miss Scarlet's realm. Now, Wadsworth mentions death um yeah. very oddly <laughs> unnecessary he, he makes it uh macabre for no reason what, but, what yeah. was the exact uh line that he says the butler is head of the let's see. Uh, here it is. Well, what's all this about butler this dinner party ours not a reason why ours what to do and die oh yeah not a reason why as to do Sorry. and die which is just a very pompous way of saying, I'm not going to tell you why <laughs> what this dinner party's about. No, he's being a dick. Uh, <laughs> that's all. He could say, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, there, you there you go. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, no, he's being a jerk. Uh, yeah. You don't, <laughs> I'm not going to tell you. I, I, I don't want to, I don't want to sound, uh, uh, like I am uh, singling out him for his uh, Europeanness, but is mm. that is that a is that a phrase from the United Kingdom we're unaware of? Like the way that, you know, the way that sometimes the Close. English speak, they speak yeah. very. It, you could say it's pompous, but that's not really the way that it's meant. It's just such a refined version of what we do in the states, especially a lot more than what we do in the South. So I wonder if that's if that's anything it, 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 or. Or was he just being a jerk? Well, my first reaction, yeah, is that he's a jerk. But also, I mean, he's in a different spot than they are, I guess. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. He also holds all the cards right now because he's the only one out of everybody, uh, out of the six-piece game characters and then himself, he's the only one who knows anything more than what they do. Yeah. And they're all playing it very cool for not knowing what's happening. They're, I don't know if I would be... Uh, so game to like, oh, yeah, now let's sit down for dinner. Yeah, especially if I know that I'm there because of, we'll find out they're there for blackmail purposes. If right. I know that, I'm not going to be like, yeah, let's have a little brandy. Let's sit in a walk through the door and go, okay, what? What do you need? Like, can we? What do you need? The car's running. Mm-hmm. And I brought a friend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tick, 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 tock. Yeah. Who may or may not be armed. So, Right, let's, let's keep it going. So I, I don't know why. Okay, so, but we don't, we can't figure out really Peacock, Plum, White. Plum and White, Professor Plum and Mrs. White, not really anything there. Um, as far as a connection or? As far as a connection, like I don't know. Oh, no. No, and then Peacock and Plum, no. No. 
Maybe that's the reason. There's oh. no connection. Maybe the connection is there's no connection. Like no really, direct. What only connected are Scarlet and Yvette and Scarlet and Mustard. And then and, and oh uh Mrs. White and Yvette. Right. Obviously she hated her so much. Yes. Then uh the cook used to be Mrs. Peacock's cook. Right. In some endings. Um so more they have more connections to the staff than each other. Yeah, and then again, uh, Plum, Plum, the motorist, and uh, the police officer. I mean, except not Plum, the singing telegram girl, the motorist, yeah. the police officer, have more connections. The mustard of the motorist. He was my driver during the war. Mm -hmm. So right now, the table, other than mustard and scarlet, there's no no real obvious real. connection. Now we're about to learn what they all six have in common over this, other than being invited to this dinner party, we're going to find out kind of more of their geographical similarities yep, and sure. uh, their professional responsibilities. And uh, I don't know. I think that, uh, I think we've, I think we covered it in this. I don't want to get to that. I'm excited. Well, let's do it. Let's do it. This is minute 11. We're going to be back with minute 12, Jeff Smith, cluedoc.com. Uh, me, you can find me on all social media at Brad Gilmore. And we're going to be back with minute 12 of clue the movie. Excited, Jeff. I'm excited. Me too. Email the species more deadly than the mail. Yeah, that still holds up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure that it does. Um, I think that you're probably one of the few people to hold this distinction of playing both a doctor and a professor in the same year of 1985. Because, of course, Back to the Future came out in 1985. So did one of my other favorite movies, Clue the Movie, where you got to play Professor Plum. That movie uh -huh. as well has taken on kind of a whole life of its own and become a cult classic. Did you, did you know when you were on that set that you had something there? Because a lot of times when you're working on something creatively, there's a feel to it. And that movie uh -huh. has a real feel to it. I just wonder if that was happening on set as you were creating that film. Uh, I I think so. I, I mean, I I really f I thought the cast was a phenomenal cast. I felt incredibly privileged to be among them, and uh, our director I can't you know, it's not getting the name right off. But a British in, English. Uh, uh, he was great. He really was into it and and made it happen. Uh, it had kind of a soft opening uh, here, but um, I've, I've been aware that over <laughs> across the pond, they love it. You know, it's very popular and it keeps going on. You know, if I go to a, a Comic-Con and I'm signing, there's so many people who select something from, from uh, I don't know. Oh, Brad, what have you done now?